Hi everyone, I am Anup Chandra from the GCS BDM team and in this presentation I will be explaining the changes that we have made to the Python transformation and the configuration that is required to set it up in Informatica Big Data Management. So I will begin this presentation by giving you a brief introduction uh, to the transformation um, followed by some of its uh, properties and uh, the bottlenecks that it faced on 10 to 1. Um, next I will talk about the changes that you have made to this transformation on 10 to 2. Uh, moving on I will um, give you a brief overview on configuring this transformation and I will wrap up this presentation by giving you a demonstration and some troubleshooting tips that you can keep in mind. Python is um, an interpreted high level and general purpose programming language. So um, it is one of you know the most popular languages currently and um, you know it helps us code faster since we do not have to write much code and it is um, very readable. So um, Python is dynamically typed and is garbage collected and um, it supports different uh, programming paradigms um, such as procedural, object oriented and functional. So when it comes to Informatica right, so the Python transformation is a passive transformation and it helps us you know define Python code um, within the mapping. So we can reference this code and the resource files that we use and uh, we can also use it to implement a machine learning model on the data that we pass in the mapping pipeline. The Python transformation on 10 to 1 uh, was built using Java embedded Python and uh, JEP it uses um, JNI calls uh, to run scripts on data and you know to set or get column values. So in order for this to work properly uh, we first had to install Python on the DAS machine um, followed by installing the JEP Python module. So once um, the libraries um, was installed we would have to copy all of these to the services shared spark Python folder and um, this approach had a few shortcomings. The first one being uh, degraded performance due to heavy reliance on the Java native interface by JEP. And the second one was increased infra RPM uh, file size since we were bundling um, the Python executables and libraries um, to the cluster. And the third one was reduced flexibility with Java to Python data type mapping. Now when it came to 10 to 2, this transformation was uh, redesigned and uh, it now uses Spark Pipe RDD um, and we do not need to install or configure JEP anymore. So this uh, Spark Pipe RDD implementation is significantly faster than JEP and uh, it involves spawning an external process for each data partition. So internally how it would work is uh, we would first spawn an external process and we would pipe this data um, in string format. So then this string data would be converted to the corresponding Python data types and um, the Python code would be executed on this data in this external process. So once complete we would uh, then uh, pipe the data back in string format. So when um, we specify both that is JEP and PyPRDD, so PyPRDD would take higher priority um, in this case. And um, just one important point to keep in mind would be that um, Python transformation on big data streaming um, is only currently supported um, on JEP and it does not support uh, Spark Pipe RDD. The first step in uh, setting up this transformation on uh, 10 to 1 uh, would be to install Python uh, using the enable shared option uh, to ensure that the shared libraries are accessible by JEP. So once um, Python, JEP and any other third party modules that we want to use have been installed, we have to copy all these files um, onto the services shared Spark Python folder in the Informatica installation directory on the uh, DAS machine. So once we have completed this, we have to perform a DAS restart so that the changes can take effect. Um, next, we have to set uh, some properties in the Spark configuration and advanced properties. The first one being uh, InfaSpark Python DX Executor ENV LD Preload. So this is the location where the Python uh, uh, shared library is present on the DAS machine. And the next property is the Executor ENV Python Home which is the location where the Python um, executable is present. And the third property would be the Python DX Submit Lib Jep Home. So this is the location 
um, on the DIS machine where the jet package uh, is installed within Python. Now when it comes to 10.2.2, um, we do not have to install Python on the DIS machine. Uh, but if we have a valid installation of Python on the data nodes of the cluster, uh, that would be sufficient. So there are two mandatory properties that we have to set um, in the Hadoop connection. So the first one would be the infaspark python dx exec and it should be set to the location where the python executable is present. Um, just keep in mind that this is on the cluster and not on the DIS machine. And the second property is the infaspark python dx executor env python home and uh, this is a location where the standard uh, python libraries are uh, located. So here for example uh, we would specify slash usr and um, the python in this case would search usr slash lib slash python version um, for the libraries um, and the python version would be picked from the previous property. Um, so the next properties are um, optional and um, they would be the infaspark python tx buffer size. So in the earlier slides I mentioned that we would create an external process to which the data is piped. So um, this property configures the buffer size uh, when that happens. So the default is 8 KB and uh, the infaspark python tx separate work directory uh, dictates whether each task that is executing the python code should have a separate um, working directory and the default value is true. The next property is the infaspark python dx encoding property um, and this is uh, used to specify the encoding used when the data is piped to the external process. So the default value that it takes is utf8 and um, the piped rdd debug property is uh, equivalent to specifying the verbose option in python and um, in case we specify for example a value of 2 then python would be invoked using hyphen vv and um, the last property is a custom property uh, which lets us specify um, any environment variables um, that the external process uses when the python code is executed. So let's move on to a demonstration um, which will give you a clearer idea on the setup process uh, that I just described. Alright, so I'm in the um, Hadoop connection which I'll be using for uh, mapping execution and uh, in the Spark configuration um, advanced properties. So I would have set two variables, namely the Python TX exec variable uh, which is pointing to user bin Python. Now this is a location where the Python um, executable is present on the cluster and uh, the second property would be the executor env python home and um, this is set to slash usr so python would basically look under slash usr slash lib and python 2.7 because that's the version of python that i'm using from the uh, cluster so we can verify the same by going here and uh, typing which python So we can see that uh, python is installed in this location and um, the python version that I am using is python 2.7.5. So the current directory that I am in is the location where the python standard libraries are present. So now that you have verified this, um, let's just go to the developer client uh, where I have created a mapping and uh, this mapping just uh, is very simple and uh, it reads from hive and writes to hive. Now in between I've introduced a python transformation which performs a simple um, action. So basically it checks whether the custom id is greater than this particular value. If it is, it sets the output port, output port value to yes, otherwise it sets it to no. So we can see that this uh, mapping has completed successfully and um, this brings us to the end of the demonstration. Before we wrap up, um, it's important that you keep these points in mind when using this transformation. Um, and uh, the first point is uh, that binary and complex data types are not currently supported. Um, the second point is that the data integration service does not validate 
the Python code that we um, specify within this transformation. And uh, the third point is that the resource file that uh, we use within this transformation, it has to be placed on the DAS machine and not on the um, data node on the cluster. So in case we specified on the data node, um, we would uh, hit an um, list index error in Python. So the last point is that um, the resource file that is used in the transformation, um, it has to be generated using the same Python version that is being used on the cluster. If you have um, any doubts or if you need any further information, you can um, refer to the links that you see on screen. So one is for 10 to 1 and one is for 10 to 2 since there's a lot of change between the two versions and uh, the another is a KB that you can refer to um, which uh, provides steps on how to install uh, Python on the DAS machine. So this brings us to the end of the presentation and if you have any um, feedback uh, we would love to hear from you and um, thank you and have a good day.